So recently I took this GORUCK M23, the aerobic edition, on a uh, short trip to San Francisco, two days of travel and then two days on site. Wanted to see how this worked out as a one bag travel kind of solution. And for a 21 liter bag, the results were actually pretty surprising. We flew Southwest and this was my only bag. So this was my personal item slash carry on slash everything. We flew on uh, 737-800s and fit right underneath the seat. Wasn't gate checked, uh, never asked to put into a sizer. There was really no problems at all. I think being kind of black helps it sort of blend uh, when the airline staff are going through the plane. So no issues whatsoever. Packing list for this trip was a wire dot large, which worked out very, very nicely. Slid that right in that topmost pocket. The sides did not really use for this trip. And then we had a peak design medium and small containing three sets of t-shirts, socks, and underwear, two sets of workout shirts, socks, underwear, iPad, winter hat, a uh, couple long sleeves for some layers. And then uh, during the course of the trip added a uh, Cotopaxi uh, zip up fleece. All of which actually fit in here. I think some of the advantages of this M23 is that expandability that you get. And I had this basically maxed out to the shroud material. So, I mean, we, we had it basically up to about here on this whole thing. Kind of nice part about that is the overall height of 19 inches just normally when you expand that out and pack it out it doesn't get any lower on your back it only just gets a little bit higher compared to the straight 20 inches on the 26 liter gr1 the hero clips actually worked very very well for uh, me and my wife Especially going through the airports, uh, getting it off the floor, bathrooms especially, that's a good one. And then the weather resistance. So it's kind of advertised that since this is the aerobic nylon as opposed to the Cordura, that this was supposed to be more uh, water resistant than usual. I unexpectedly put that to the test when uh, our first night when we went to go take the Alcatraz tour. So it's by boat and it was raining the entire time. So figure two, two and a half hours of just continually getting rained on. It's not waterproof, they don't claim that it is, but other than a little bit of dampness in the uh, inside of the top lid and a little bit on this outermost pocket, and that's just a slight dampness. I had uh, like a paper card in here that wasn't even wrinkled or soaked through. It actually withstood everything, and I was completely stupid and left my iPad in there the whole time, and happy to report the whole laptop compartment completely protected. I was getting rained on the entire time. The other idea behind bringing the M23 along was as opposed to the 26 liter GR1, which I have traveled with, I knew that this trip was going to involve a lot of walking, a lot of all day stuff where I'd want a bag with me for changing of layers or whatever else came up. And I kind of felt that with this on my frame, that lower height was going to eventually bug the crap out of my belt. So I opted to see if this shorter bag would do it. And this worked out great. I have a 17 and a half inch long torso, so short person torso on a five foot 10 frame of all legs. This worked out great as an all day bag and it carried everything that I needed to and fro, even adding that extra fleece at the end. So very, very pleased with the performance, the comfort and the just overall using it. Now, that top loading feature, still takes a little bit of getting used to. It's never gonna be as fast or as convenient as clamshell. So there is a trade-off there. The external access, that was a pretty good pro. Uh, the small odds and ends that you would need to fish out 
and the ability to sling that over your shoulder and access it there is actually pretty nice, even for travel. Now the <clears throat> downside is remembering the layout of it, everything here. Nothing is symmetrical, so now you have to kind of take a second to visualize, all right, if I'm looking at it this way, my thing is here or here. Yeah, that would take a little bit of getting used to. The biggest surprise for me was the actual capacity between these two things. So yes, they rate this at a 21 liter. This right here would be the 26 liter. Loads of people travel with this for extended periods of time or indefinitely. By no means a professional one bag traveler. I'm sure somebody has got me beat in the six ways from Sunday. That's fine. But being about 21 liters, I fit more in this than the GR1. I took the exact same loadout when I got back, tried to stuff it back into this thing, couldn't actually get it close. Here's a picture. Now with the loadout that I had in here, yes, it could fit more than the GR1. At least with the items that I brought, the way that I packed them, I'm sure it could have been better but this was about maxed out. I could get it all in, but there was very little chance of getting in more. Your trips uh, may vary, so should you have access to laundry or you're going someplace warmer where you don't need all the layering, sure, you could go probably for longer. And if you're a super one bag traveler and you've got this all down pat, I'm sure you could probably do a definite travel out of this thing. But for those, at least for me, the short-term trips, this is a lighter, more comfortable option than the GR1 was. I could fit more stuff in it, and it was a bit more handy to have that external access. And the top load, yeah, that does slow you down and add a couple layers of complexity sometimes. However, suspending this, especially for on our bus trip, and then just having that front lid right in front of you, actually turned out to be a pro. For me, I think that at least where I'm at and the kind of traveling that I'd like to do, the lighter, more weather resistant, maybe subtly less tactical. I mean, it, it still is, but it's less. Uh, the smaller footprint, but also having a greater capacity. Uh, this was a win for me. So I envision this as sort of my short to medium term travel bag. As far as the wear and tear on the Robic, other than a little bit of dirt on it and getting tossed around inside the airplane and vehicles on this trip. No appreciable wear to be seen. That water resistance is actually pretty good. Jasper's telling me that's enough yakking for one day. So he'll see you in the next one.